business book summaries. Once a kid fascinated by numbers, Edward Thorpe grew up during the tough times of the Great Depression. Learning the basics of math before he turned five, he also developed a keen sense of frugality. After a stint as a newspaper delivery boy, he expanded his horizons by becoming a ham radio operator at the age of 12. Despite his parents' discord leading to eventual divorce, Thorpe's interest in abstract thinking and understanding the natural world persisted. Before we delve further, remember that we regularly share new content. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel Business Book Summaries and hit the notification bell for the latest updates. At 17, he found himself at the University of California, Berkeley, initially studying chemistry. Struggling to make ends meet, he later shifted to UCLA, where he delved into physics and math, ultimately earning a PhD in mathematics. It was during this time that he met his future wife, Vivian Sinat, another student at UCLA. Thorpe's journey took a fascinating turn during a visit to Las Vegas. Inspired by the world of gambling, he saw an opportunity to gain an edge in blackjack using a probability-based approach. His move to MIT in 1959 allowed him to work on a computer project aimed at winning in blackjack, emphasizing the idea that gambling is essentially a simplified form of investing. Thorpe's success story didn't stop in Vegas. Armed with quantitative techniques and probability theories, he transitioned to Wall Street, creating a hedge fund that consistently outperformed the market. Striking a delicate balance between risk and reward, he became a millionaire by 1975. Not just a financial wizard, Thorpe was a pioneer in technology, building the first wearable computer. In the 1990, he played a crucial role in valuing derivatives and even saved a client from the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme. Thorpe's insights into the 2008 housing market collapse attributed it to excessive borrowing fueled by government policies and Wall Street securitizations. Throughout his journey, Thorpe emphasized the power of compound interest and advocated for the benefits of indexing. He believed in teaching probability and statistics from kindergarten to help people better understand real-world issues. Thorpe's life is a testament to the impact of early fascination with numbers and the application of mathematical thinking in various fields. The Vegas Revelation Edward Thorpe faced a wave of criticism when he shared his method for outsmarting casinos at an American Mathematical Society meeting. However, with the support of two wealthy entrepreneurs, he eventually proved the success of his technique. Thorpe's card-counting approach turned out to be a big win validating all his efforts. He felt a sense of accomplishment, realizing that just by using pure math in a room, he could change the world around him. Leaving his position at MIT, Thorpe became an associate professor at New Mexico State University. This move followed his deep investigations into casino practices that were rigged against customers. He documented his findings in Beat the Dealer, a book focusing on blackjack. Once he conquered Blackjack, Thorpe set his sights on finding ways to beat Roulette and Baccarat. MIT later acknowledged Thorpe and his colleague Claude Shannon for building the first wearable computer. Thorpe discreetly wore it under his clothes during casino games. After his triumph in Las Vegas, he set his sights on the ultimate casino, Wall Street. Thorpe's initial foray into investments on Wall Street didn't yield profits, but it taught him valuable lessons. He became aware of the danger of anchoring, where investors cling to a security position hoping for it to return to a specific price. Another lesson was not to expect the momentum in rising or falling stock prices to last indefinitely. A failed investment in the silver market highlighted the importance of watching out for conflicts of interest. Influenced by his experiences during the Great Depression and early investments, Thorpe made reducing risk a central part of his investing approach. Applying his gambling skills to investing, he believed he could outperform market indices through statistical methodologies and computers. For Thorpe, investing meant finding the right balance between taking calculated risks and avoiding ruin, all while being vigilant against conflicts of interest. He educated himself by reading timeless classics like Graham and Dodd's Security Analysis, recognizing the shared psychological traits required for success in both investing and gambling. Great investors, he observed, 
often possess similar characteristics to successful gamblers. Mastering the Investment Game By this time, Edward Thorpe had moved to a new academic position at the University of California, Irvine, and his skills in investing had significantly boosted his financial standing. Thorpe was not just good at investing, he was also a trailblazer in derivatives pricing, figuring out how to value stock warrants. In 1997, economists Robert Merton and Myron Skulds won the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences for their derivatives pricing formula, which was quite similar to Thorpe's approach outlined in his 1967 book, Beat the Market. Thorpe's journey included meeting Warren Buffett, considered one of the most successful investors of all time. Thorpe later became an investor in Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. While Buffett focused on fundamental valuation in investing, Thorpe made money by exploiting pricing imbalances among different securities a company issued. He effectively hedged his position by going long on underpriced securities and simultaneously shorting overpriced ones, protecting himself against market volatility. For Thorpe, investing was more than accumulating money, it was a way to engage in mathematics and confirm his theories. This alignment with his profession allowed him to enjoy his academic career while pursuing investments on the side. Thorpe emphasized proper risk management, making it a major theme of his life for more than 50 years. In 1969, Thorpe set up a hedge fund, Convertible Hedge Associates, later renamed Princeton Newport Partners, PNP, in partnership with Jay Reagan, a New York stockbroker. Reagan handled the business side, leaving Thorpe to generate investment ideas. Thorpe's hedging technique involved investing in both an underlying stock and an associated security, benefiting from market mispricing. His mathematical computer models identified these mispricings, establishing him as an early quantitative investor. A key lesson Thorpe learned was that it doesn't pay to push the other party to their absolute limit. A small extra gain is generally not worth the substantial risk of the deal breaking up. By 1975, Thorpe had become a millionaire, thanks to his investing expertise, but the success also distanced him from his academic colleagues and led him to make the full-time shift to his hedge fund in 1982. The glory days for PNP came in 1979, a decade after its founding, when it produced a 14.1% annualized return after fees. In comparison, the S&P 500 managed only a 4.6% annualized return after accounting for dividends, despite exposing investors to greater risk. PNP then explored other avenues for investment ideas, including an indicators project studying various corporate financial metrics to gauge a stock's future earnings. Nailing Early Information How do you know if the information you have is good and timely? According to Thorpe, if you're unsure, it probably isn't. He points to the market crash of October 1987 as a prime example. Portfolio insurance, designed to protect investors, ironically led to a cascading sell-off when institutional investors, using computer programs, automatically sold stocks during a market downturn. Thorpe, however, successfully navigated this crash, making a million-dollar profit through arbitrage. Thorpe also sheds light on corporate executives speculating with shareholder assets, noting that they often get personal rewards for wins and bailouts with public funds for losses. While Thorpe's hedge fund, Princeton Newport Partners, PNP, thrived initially, its glory days came to an end in 1987 when it faced scrutiny from the IRS and FBI due to its association with individuals like Michael Milken. Though PNP was not directly implicated, the government was investigating wrongdoings on Wall Street. Thorpe, having exposed Bernie Madoff's fabricated trades, found himself entangled in this legal web. The fallout from the investigations eventually led to PNP going out of business. Afterward, Thorpe enjoyed the company of family and friends, engaging in leisure pursuits. In 1991, he became an advisor for a consulting firm investigating hedge fund holdings, including one with Bernie Madoff. Thorpe's skepticism about Madoff's consistent returns proved valid, and he warned the client, leading to the liquidation of their Madoff investment. Returning to Wall Street from 1992 to 2002, Thorpe set up a statistical arbitrage operation called XYZ, 
producing an annualized return of 18.2% compared to the S&P 500 7.77%. He also established an investment partnership, Ridgeline Partners, which provided an average annual return of 18% over eight years. Thorpe extolled the concept of compound interest as the eighth wonder of the world and advocated for indexing as the easiest way to outperform most investors. He refuted the efficient markets hypothesis, highlighting the success of his hedge fund and Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. He emphasized that markets are inefficient because most investors lack the necessary knowledge and information. In offering advice, Thorpe urged people to enjoy life, share it with loved ones, and leave a positive legacy. Regarding asset allocation, he favored value-oriented investors over market timers. Reflecting on the Great Depression and the 2008 housing market collapse, Thorpe traced both crises to excessive borrowing, where investors could put up as little as 10% of a stock's price and borrow the rest. Decoding Market Crashes In Thorpe's analysis, when stock prices started declining, the entire market collapsed. Similarly, he attributes the 2008 crisis to poorly underwritten loans given to homebuyers who made little to no payments. Thorpe links the housing market crash to a mix of government policies pushing for expanded home ownership and the real estate industry's actions, combined with lenders selling loans to Wall Street for securitization to rid themselves of risk. He also points fingers at ratings agencies for being overly optimistic creating conflicts of interest with the securities industry that paid for these optimistic ratings. Thorpe highlights that since the 1980, less stringent financial industry regulations have led to increased leverage, easy money, and financial engineering. This, in turn, resulted in various asset bubbles, including the 1987 market crash, the long-term capital management meltdown, and the housing market bust in 2008. He credits his success to his mathematical education and his ability to continuously learn. According to Thorpe, education shapes the brain's ability to navigate the world. Hence, he recommends schools teach probability and statistics from kindergarten onwards to enhance people's understanding of real-world issues. Additionally, Thorpe advocates for children to gain financial literacy. Thorpe also voices his concerns about politically connected wealthy individuals manipulating the political landscape due to their wealth, asserting that there's nothing wrong with people accumulating riches through fair means in a meritocracy. However, he strongly disapproves of wealth accumulation through manipulating political influence. Beat the Market are the insightful works of Edward Thorpe, a mathematician and investment expert. Thorpe's journey unfolds from his childhood fascination with numbers during the Great Depression to his pioneering efforts in beating the odds in Las Vegas casinos and Wall Street investments. With a blend of mathematical acumen and innovative strategies, Thorpe challenges traditional financial thinking. His success in derivatives pricing, navigating market crashes, and exposing financial fraud showcases his remarkable ability to adapt and thrive in the ever-changing landscape of finance. Thorpe emphasizes the importance of education, urging schools to teach probability, statistics, and financial literacy from an early age. As a critic of wealth accumulation through political manipulation, Thorpe's works provide both a historical perspective on financial markets and timeless insights for investors navigating the complexities of risk and reward. We're keen to hear your thoughts on our content. Feel free to share your opinions or recommend books in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel business book summaries and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest summaries. Thank you and have a wonderful day.